So we've, I feel like we've talked about new age stuff mm-hmm. a little bit and we've had a full episode on it. We've had yep. a couple single chairs. I know Jacob talked a little bit about yoga. Yes, but that was a prime one. Everyone should watch it. Yes. We decided that we touched on just a little bit the Enneagram. Ooh. <laughs> I'm not landing anywhere with this yet. Like okay. I'm not I'm not on one side which I guess one side would be the enneagram is demonic and we should not mm-hmm. have any partaking of yeah, that whole thing or that is one but side. I'm not on the enneagram is all powerful and knowing and the loving. only personality like, yeah, that like matters. You, sh- you will yeah. know yourself and everyone else from the enneagram. Yeah. Okay. I'm somewhere in the middle where I feel like it's a tool, mm-hmm. but also I'm still, I don't know. I'm still kind of trying to figure it out. So what do you think? Yeah, I'm actually right there with you, Jen, but I think it's a really important conversation um, to have. But I think before we have the conversation, you know, you talked about how there's these two different camps. Um, one is very demonic. One is very, it's a tool. Um, and I think we need to give a little background first before we uh, make a decision. So there's been a lot of different origins about the Enneagram thrown out. By the um, way, did you tell, should we talk about what the Enneagram is? Yeah, we actually should. <laughs> we That's should talk about really that, guys. Smart. I'm like over here like, let me give you a history lesson. Let me tell you what's up. Generalization. The Enneagram is a personality test. Um, so it's very much in the same camp as like the Myers-Briggs, Strength Finders, those kind of different things. They help kind of assess your personality, understand how you respond to certain situations, but also how you interact with others, the world around you, um, ex- and especially how you work in a work setting, how your personality kind of shines through. So that's what the Enneagram is um, in a 40,000 foot view. But um, like I said before, the origins of the Enneagram are a little bit unknown. Like there's not, it's not like you can tie it back to, you know, Kabbalah or to, this origin or to the ancient near east or or anything like that there there's not really any details about where it actually lands in its true origins none of them have been sustained so we're not going to spend a lot of time there so the earliest mention that we do have of the enneagram uh, is from a russian occultist and i'm probably going to butcher his name but it is p d ospensky yeah that sounds about right And he considered the Enneagram symbol, now giving a little bit more backstory to you all, the Enneagram has a a symbol that kind of makes it well known. And it's this circle with some triangles and some stars. So have fun in editing that, Jay. But he believed that that kind of came from the cosmos. Like it was out in the universe. And that's where he kind of got this this drawing from and, and the different points of the nine different personality types. Well, then there was another occultist, and his name, which I'm also probably going to butcher, it's Oscar Inchaz- Inchazo? Does that sound? It looks like Icazo. Icazo? I don't know. But he's the one who actually connected it to personality, saying that there's these nine personality traits that we each have. Um, but here's the little fun fact, interesting fact, fact. He discovered the nine personality traits, Jen, while he was high, (laughs) like Aaron Rodgers high. It's a little weird to me that like a whole personality assessment is literally based off of some guy's vision from when he was on drugs. Two occultists and being high are in the mix now. Yes. So (laughs) its origins are not great. Um, And I think that's why a lot of people really struggle with the Enneagram, because once they start to trace it back, they're like, this isn't really great so here's the thing though and and this is where I feel like I'm like you Jen I'm kind of in the middle so if you if you were looking to watch this and and have me draw some line in the sand hard stance no this is demonic we can't do it yes we can do it that's not really where I'm at because I think as believers there's a lot of things in this world that we utilize as tools that have very similar backgrounds and roots There's stuff that we buy at the store. There's stuff that we buy online. uh, There's products we use every day that literally the people who created them don't love Jesus, might be devil worshipers. We don't know for sure. And yet we still use them, but they don't affect our lives in a way where we worship them. And I think the same can be said true for these personality tests like the Enneagram. I think there's a lot of people who struggle um, 
in the workplace or, or in their personal relationships of how to connect with people who are different than them, how to connect with, you know, the person who might be more shy or more passive and you're just the crazy outgoing type and you're like, I don't know how to connect with you. But then I found this tool that kind of shows how my personality and your personality can better each other or benefit each other or work together. And I think that's a pretty interesting thing. Um, to keep in mind is how are you utilizing this tool? If you're utilizing it like that and you're utilizing it to help better your life, to connect with people, better your workplace, then I would say continue using it. But now this is where I would I would say you should stop using it is if it is now your whole identity and personality. So if your whole identity and personality is that I'm a five, then we have a little bit of a problem because now you've taken this personality test, you've taken this thing that um, is meant to be a tool and you've turned it into your whole entire identity. And I think that's where we, we, we draw that line of, I don't know if you should be using it, if it's your identity, because as believers, we a hundred percent know our identity is in Christ, that we are made in the image of God, that he created us. Um, and we don't need to be confined by these five personality traits or that if you're doing Myers-Briggs that you're an ENTJ or, or whatever it might be. Um, and I think that's where, where we cross that line of, we shouldn't be using this. We shouldn't be using this tool because now we have taken it on as our full identity. It's who we are. It's who we stand by. It's not the end all be all. And then, you know, when people look at you after you tell them your Enneagram number and they're like, I totally understand you now. And it's like, we've had a three minute conversation. You know, I, I think there's more to me than just what this personality test has said. But now if we're working together and you know that I'm a five and that I like to really think through things and deeply research things and, and make, you know, process through everything before I make a decision and you're a, let's say, seven who is a creative and whimsy and all over the place, we've got to figure out how to work together to move our workplace forward and to be productive together. And I think that's where it's a good tool to say, okay, this is where we can balance each other out. But I've just, you know, I've been having conversations with my friends recently and I have two friends, um, two of my best friends who are very, I don't want to say they're anti anagram they just don't care. <laughs> they're like, why? And it's been kind of interesting to have those conversations with them because then I have a whole nother like set of friends who like live and die by the Enneagram. And I'm like, I just don't think that that's the camp I necessarily fall in. I just am very much like, yeah, like let's evaluate who we are as people, like through the lens of who Christ calls us to be and is saying like, okay, if I'm looking at this personality type, whether it's Myers-Briggs, whether it's Enneagram, whether it's the DISC or the hundred other that there are, is how do I look at my weaknesses as this as a way towards sanctification and redemption and pointing myself more towards Jesus? So if my Enneagram is telling me that when I'm in stress or unhealthy stages that I tend to be very angry and snappy and disoriented, well, then maybe that's something that I need to take before the Lord and figure out like, okay, why am I angry? Like, what am I angry about? Why am I disoriented? Why am I frustrated? Um, you know, and just take that before the Lord and ask for his, his healing and his guided hand. And then, and then maybe share that with somebody else to help keep you accountable in those situations. Um, if, if you can at the workplace or at home or with group or whatever. Um, so yeah, it's an interesting conversation and I feel like it's one that's ongoing. I would love to know your guys' thoughts. I would love to know where you fall with the Enneagram. What are some ways that maybe it's been a great tool for you? Um, but maybe what are some of the dangers in that as well? Uh, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching Everyday Theology. If you would like more of this content, don't forget to hit the subscribe button.